Hey everyone, this is Jay, also known as Jay Nemesis. I am a popular investor on eToro, and this is our weekly update for week 25 of 2018. Our weekly stats this week, we have a portfolio change of minus 4.08%, and a realized profit of minus 5.65%. We have 25 trades were closed in total. Our top news this week, uh, Tesla has started the process of suing a former employee over data theft. Uh, this is pretty much a he says, she says argument. It stems back to an article that was released on Business Insider uh, a little over a week ago now, where the the guy basically leaked a bunch of information about uh, the production numbers from Tesla and some of the uh, raw material waste that was happening in the company. Uh, he claims that he is actually a whistleblower and uh, that he was concerned about some of the safety of cars that were heading out of the production line at Tesla. Um, and that the batteries were were punctured in some of the cars. Obviously, Tesla has disputed this and said that it's not true, um, and effectively cited that he's angry that he didn't get a promotion and uh, he's just a, a disgruntled employee, effectively. So it's kind of interesting. I don't have any positions in Tesla at the moment because I'm actually um, kind of waiting for you know some some better confirmation and real you know real hard figures on on how many cars have been produced and that they're still on target with uh shipping cars over to Europe and everything else for example but it's an interesting little argument and uh i think it's definitely probably played uh, a bit of havoc with the price uh over the past week or so Square has received the New York Bit license. So Square obviously has been doing really well for us recently uh one of my favorite stocks at the moment and I've been bullish on on them with crypto for a while. They reported uh, selling thirty four million dollars worth of Bitcoin in their previous earnings call, um, and surely this is going to help because now they're able to sell to the state of New York, which is uh, great news. It's actually quite an exclusive license. It's pretty hard to get, so uh, pretty impressive that Square managed to uh, get it. So yeah, good news there. Mt. Gox has entered civil rehabilitation proceedings. This basically means that they will soon be uh, looking to pay back the victims of the Mt. Gox uh, hack and bankruptcy and everything else that happened around it from back in 2013. So claimants have until October the 22nd to uh, basically file a claim. Uh, they have to prove that they lost money and that they had an account and all of these kind of things and jump through a, f a few hoops. Uh, and then in September, uh, Mt. Gox will begin actually paying out the money to those who were affected. Uh, this is really, really good news for Bitcoin because um, the the guys at Mt. Gox who are selling all of the Bitcoins now have to stop doing that because they have to re refund people either in Bitcoin or in US dollars. And previously, uh, until this, uh, this recent thing went through, uh, it had to be in US dollars, which means that it was valued at the price of Bitcoin when the collapse happened, which was around $400. Now it's changed, so they have to potentially be paying people back in Bitcoin. I imagine most people are going to go for that option, uh, which means that actually we may even see them going back to the markets with the money that they raised from selling their Bitcoins to go and buy them back again. <laughs> so uh, pretty chaotic, uh, chaotic scenes, really. But um, good news overall, because it does mean that the selling pressure that was put on by Mt. Gox, which was a major driving force of what started this bear market, has now turned on its head and potentially could even turn into uh, a strong signal for uh, a rally. So we'll see how it turns out. But uh, if you're affected by Mt. Gox, then uh, you probably know more than I do. So on to our crypto recap. So Bitcoin, uh, a couple of trades were closed here. Nothing spectacular, really, really short term, uh, long positions, uh, both for around 1% profit. Litecoin, I had two positions left in Litecoin and I closed both of them uh, at pretty substantial losses, around 50% or so on both of them. And uh, these Litecoin positions were, were two that I was actually unsure about when I first opened them. Uh, effectively, they were more of a hedge. Uh, they were opened back before um, Litepay and things like that had been cancelled and, and before uh, the bear market really sort of dug its heels in. So it was, it was more of a hedge and a diversification tactic. But uh, even back then, I was very, very cautious about Litecoin. And I said that I had concerns over its place in the market in the long term. And over the past uh, few months, um, 
kind of looking into the community and and looking at the hype and looking at the developers and, and what's going on it definitely feels like litecoin has kind of simmered down a bit um even charlie lee selling selling his litecoin and things like that i said at the time was a bit of a, a strange move and i don't really understand it and uh it seems to me like litecoin doesn't really have that much of a, a unique selling point so i have decided to close these two positions at substantial loss um to reinvest elsewhere I may not necessarily earn more um, than what we lost from these if I were to, for example, put it into Bitcoin because Bitcoin is less volatile than Litecoin. But I just feel like it's the risk reward ratio wasn't really there anymore, whereas it was back in um, you know December, November kind of time. There was really some some pretty good cases for for holding on to Litecoin, whereas now I think that's quite a lot weaker. Stella, so Stella, I've rebalanced uh, slightly. Um, only one position, which was a pretty large position that was down by around 50%. I decided to close it because I just felt like I had slightly too much uh, Stella in my portfolio. Um, there's really nothing more to it than that. I, I would rather invest that money in perhaps a different cryptocurrency such as EOS. Same thing with Dash, but on a much, much larger scale. So Dash, like Litecoin, I did a bit of digging, went into the community, been on Reddit quite a lot, been on um, some of the forums uh, and it just feels like the, the community has kind of lost a bit of its drive. Um, and of course, with the delays to Dash Evolution, which was meant to be out by now, um, there's there's really not that many strong signals to hold on to it. It's, it's far from being as bad as Litecoin. It, I still feel like it's got a very, very strong place in the market um, as kind of an in-between between cryptocurrencies like Monero and cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin. Um, it's it's got some great features and it's 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 really quite a unique cryptocurrency i would say um but again i i went very very heavy into it and i was really hoping to see evolution pay off uh but it's just taken too long and uh so yeah i took i took the pretty difficult decision of closing uh seven trades in total which is uh over 50 percent of all of the dash that i was holding and basically taking that money out to invest elsewhere i just feel like we can get better and more guaranteed returns elsewhere uh, a lot of this money actually is going to go back into stock trading probably until around the end of 2018 when the market is uh, much more bullish again for cryptocurrencies so for those of you that have been wanting me to stop holding so much crypto um i guess you guys are in luck for those of you that really do not like uh like me ever closing anything in red then unfortunately for you guys i did decide to take this decision um i've considered it for quite a while actually but uh yeah i think i think it was just the, the right time to do it and uh and to rebalance so we'll see how it turns out with regards to our EOS positions, obviously, hopefully you guys have uh, have read my updates and stuff over the past couple of weeks. While I was out in Canada, a bunch of positions did get closed. They weren't closed by me. They were closed by eToro from a human error um, on their side. Uh, after quite a lot of... Uh, discussion on the phone and stuff uh, the decision was taken to basically leave them closed um this was obviously a bit of a risk because i didn't know when the market was going to reopen and i didn't know the price it was going to reopen at at so i didn't know if you know the entire crypto market would go up or down obviously eos to a certain extent follows the markets uh, it turns out that the market went down which has been good news for us i've already reopened around 80 percent of the closed trades uh ranging from 20 percent lower than where they were closed um all the way to you know, 35% or so. So we've actually got two, at the time of recording this, at least we've got two EOS positions in profit at the moment and quite a few more that are really quite close to profit. So this is actually looking pretty good for us. Um, I did give, uh, make a blog post recently kind of explaining some of the drama that's uh, taken place on EOS recently. Uh, I'm still very, very bullish on EOS overall. I still hold majority EOS in my private wallet outside of eToro. And uh, yeah, go go read my blog if you haven't read it yet. I think it should hopefully reassure you somewhat as to what's been going on and how things are going with EOS. On to our stock recap. And uh, as you can see, I've traded quite a few stocks this week, uh, although reasonably small quantities. Uh, the market was actually up quite a lot. So I did uh, I did close a few positions back in fr on Friday, uh, and I've started reaccumulating them already this week as the, the market has dropped back down a bit. Uh, starting with Sony. So Sony is pretty much just a, a trade based on those exact circumstances that I just mentioned. The, the markets were up. It didn't perform as well as I hoped it would during E3. Uh, 
two of the trades hit profit and they weren't at amazing prices. So I figured I would take the small profits and uh, wait for a better entry point with Sony. If, if at all, to be honest, because uh, it's, it's not a stock that's really that volatile. So it's a bit more difficult to, tr- to really make good returns on it. Uh, Twitter. So two trades closed on Twitter for very different uh, percentages. One was 1.2% profit. The other was uh, 34.8% profit, which is really, really good. Um, I'm basically awaiting a dip to, to buy a few more, really. Um, a few more positions in Twitter again. I'm down to, I think, three positions now. So uh, pretty low exposure compared to what I've had over the past two or three weeks. We've really benefited quite a lot from Twitter's rally. Of course, I, I actually was uh, saying that Twitter was a really strong buy back when it was $15 in like January and stuff. But uh, of course, I didn't listen to myself and as much as I perhaps should have. So uh, we didn't buy uh, didn't buy up too much, but we have benefited a good amount. And uh, I, think, I don't think there's that much room left uh, for Twitter actually in the short term. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to be holding it through earnings, uh, maybe a small amount. But uh, I did say that fifty dollars was my target a few weeks ago, and we hit like forty six, forty seven dollars during this rally. So uh, I'll be looking for somewhere around forty dollars before I really consider buying any more positions, just because I think the risk reward ratio has kind of gone down a little bit now, and we've perhaps seen the big growth spurt that Twitter's going to see this year. Uh, Spotify uh, got another upgrade by analysts, and again, you know, this is uh, a company that I said when they IPO'd has got an awful lot of potential. They're effectively they're a bit like Netflix in that they've got a borderline monopoly in their market now. Um, obviously, there are contenders like Amazon Music and you know Google Music and things like that. But realistically, Spotify has got you know a, a huge, huge market there, and uh, they've started diversifying into uh, podcasts and things like that. So, uh, yeah, I, I'm pretty bullish about the the company overall. So, uh, we have a few positions. I closed one trade this week at eight point eight percent profit. As usual, I'll be trying to buy back in a bit lower uh, and see where we can go. But uh, no plans on shorting it or anything like that at the moment. Snapchat. Uh, I actually did one trade that I'm really quite happy with on Snapchat specifically, which is a 2x leverage trade. Uh, it was about six days long or something like that, or five days long. Um, and it returned us 15% profit, which I'm uh, I'm very happy about. I actually sold it pretty much bang on uh, the lowest price of the week for Snapchat. So uh, really quite happy with that trade, especially since I... Uh, <coughs> I started it when I was in Canada and I finished it when I was back in the UK, I think. So quite happy with that. Um, Another one was also closed at 1.5%. We've still got a few more trades open. Two of them are currently green at the time of recording this video. So uh, things looking good on the Snapchat trading. It's actually, it seems to be something that I do very, very well at for some reason. Um, I guess just because Snapchat (laughs) is kind of steadily going down it's uh it's always a, a reasonably safe bet to be shorting them uh it's also as i said as i've said a few times it's really nice to have uh, a couple of positions short on the stock market for just in case there is a big uh, crash or correction we're pretty much guaranteed to win on that if that happens so uh yeah enjoying those trades activision two trades closed eight percent and three percent not too much to say here really um yeah you know uh it's just nice to close some some green trades, I guess. Nintendo is another one that I've actually traded quite a lot during E3. I was actually trading it while I was on the train in Canada. Um, I actually I lost signal at one point and panicked a bit, but the signal came back, so uh, we were all good. And we made some 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 really good trades on Nintendo actually over the past week or so. Lots of small trades, but um, you know, really really quick turnarounds. We're talking about you know a few hours at a time. This one in particular, I managed to close it maybe a couple of hours before Nintendo dropped by around 8%. And then, you know, uh, I've been looking around and I think I bought back a couple of positions since then. So yeah, quite, quite happy with how I've been doing with Nintendo as well. Finally, we have the SBX 500. So with the trade war situation going on, um, you would have, you would expect the markets to have been dropping more and for this position to have uh, done a bit better for us. The same as the other shorts that I had open um, pretty much since like February when it became clear to me that the uh the trump uh the trump comments about um tariffs and stuff really were likely to happen uh it's <laughs> it's been a bit of a wild ride and it's very very strange to me that the markets haven't reacted more negatively than they have but regardless i decided to close this hedge um 
Thirty-six percent lost. It's not great, but uh, again, you know these these things happen. It's it's a hedge for a reason. A hedge basically means you know it's something that I don't think is that likely to happen. But if it does happen, then we make some money out of it. Um, you know, and it, it's it's going against the rest of our portfolio. So it's it's there as a backup, and uh, effectively, I've now closed the backup. So uh, we are left uh, a bit more vulnerable to if it does go the other way. But it just seems like the market doesn't want to. Um, it's quite weird. And obviously, since quite a lot of the companies I trade are in the US, and the US seems to be the country that's benefiting from this situation at the moment, at least. Um, you know, I think it's I think it's. Uh, pretty okay to close this out i'm uh, you know i'll keep an eye on the situation i may end up uh opening some more further down the line but for the moment i'm kind of happy not to have any shorts realize trading stats for this week obviously this is um pretty extreme due to the uh dash positions that i closed and the two litecoin positions that i pl- closed and even the uh, spx 500 uh, position that i closed so you can see uh 25 trades closed in total 14 were profitable, 11 were unprofitable, uh, which is quite substantial. Average trade profit, 3.54%. Average trade loss, minus 55.74%. Again, that's primarily from the Dash positions. Uh, Most traded instrument was obviously Dash with seven positions. And our total profit for the week was minus 5.65%. So uh, not, not a great week by any stretch of the imagination. But um, again, I did I did say that we are likely to head down to this 5.5k mark with Bitcoin, which obviously means that the altcoins are going to be affected a substantial amount as well. Some of the dash positions currently, as the market looks right now, weren't sold at the best time. Um, we'll see if it retests that bottom. I, I think it's probably got maybe one more leg down to really kind of test that 5.5 support level. Um, so we'll see if that happens. And if so, then the positions I closed weren't at such a bad price. Um, but overall, you know, honestly, it's, uh, it feels like a weight off my shoulders to have gotten rid of those dash positions. So as much as it, it has hurt us this month, especially, um, I think it was, I think it was something that needed to be done really. So, uh, better to cut them and, uh, and kind of move on. Switching over to the performance slide, you can see that, uh, May and June so far have not been great for us. June was actually looking reasonable until this week, uh, but of course, the cryptos taking their their drop down a, a step further has uh, not helped us out too much. We have been making some really strong returns on stock markets, which is why, as I said earlier, I'm going to switch my focus a little bit. Um, but as you can see, you know, week 25 my, minus 5.65 percent is the second worst week I've had of the year. Uh, again, from closing those dash positions, it was just a difficult decision that needed to be made. Um, everyone criticized me for doing that on the other week that was really bad, which I think was week 11, um, when I closed quite a lot of uh, crypto positions uh, in deep red and people criticized me for it. And then the price dropped a lot lower. So uh, it turned out to be a good decision at the time. I don't think the price is actually going to drop that much lower. Um, this time and we're not looking to buy back into dash specifically so it's a bit more difficult to kind of keep track of um, if it was a good decision or a bad decision but uh, i still think it was uh, an important thing to do to kind of de-risk a little bit looking forward so i did say that bitcoin would potentially fall to 5.5k support level Um, this was actually a few weeks it might have even been over a month ago now um, that i suggested it I actually posted a chart and I said that, you know, I think we're likely to break out. And if we don't break out, then we're almost certainly going to 5.5K. And I I put those odds at like, I think it was like 60, 40 or something like that. So it turns out that we have headed, we have gone down to the 5K level or so. Um, We haven't gone quite as far as 5.5K, but we did bounce off around uh, 5.7 or so um, on most exchanges. And we're sitting just above 6,000 at the moment. I do think that we could head down a little bit further again and and retest that level maybe once or twice more. But with the Mt. Gox news and some of the other things going on in Bitcoin, you know, I I remain very very bullish. I'm I'm incredibly confident uh, that Bitcoin will return back up to 20k or so. Uh, although I do think that perhaps my estimate of uh, 50k by the end of the year is is now a little bit optimistic. Uh, so 
still hoping for around 20k by the end of the year and i i still think that 50k is possible this is crypto you never really know what's going to go on um there's a, there's been some good stuff said recently by you know the the head of the sec and, and people like that about cryptocurrencies and uh how they sit as securities or not as securities for example so there's there's quite a lot to be optimistic about and you know i've been through a bear market like this before um and i was a lot more stressed back then than i am now because back then they're really you know it really was experimental and no one really knew if it was working but i think the the evidence is in and cryptocurrencies are here to stay and they're going to change a lot of things over time so i'm not really too worried about it it does mean that we're just going to have to hold on for a bit longer though on the plus side, from closing some of the Dash positions and from uh, actively trading stock markets recently, we do have quite a lot of money in reserve. I say that, but I did go on a bit of a shopping spree earlier today on some stocks. Um, this is good because it means that we can rebuy back into EOS, Bitcoin, and some other stocks uh, to ride the wave back up, especially in the cryptocurrencies, hopefully. The other big thing that's coming up, of course, is earnings. So we have uh, Q2 slash Q3 earnings, depending on the company. Uh, coming up over the next few weeks, um, I will be going through and updating my calendar with what they all are. As you know, I like to listen to pretty much every earnings call for every company that I invest in, even if I don't have positions in it. Um, and even some of the companies that are just in the space as well sometimes. Uh, of of the stuff that's going on, I think my big hope is for solar companies. So uh, First Solar and Solar Edge were both hit very, very hard by the China news. I don't think it's actually as big a news as everyone's making out. Um, I listen to those earnings call, uh, calls and I know that these companies actually make a very small amount from China specifically, but obviously they are importing um, a lot of stuff from there and it's you know it's a big market and it was a big potential future growth market as well. So we'll see how it goes, um, but I I don't think it will affect these companies as badly as everyone thinks, which means that we should see a good jump during earnings for those companies. Cool. Well, that just about does it for me, guys. Um, thanks for watching again. Feel free to check out the written report that I put up on eToro. Uh, I also did a blog post recently about EOS. It was very, very short. It was actually intended to post on eToro, but I had a couple of problems posting it, so I ended up putting it up on the blog instead. Um, if there's anything you guys really want me to talk about and discuss, then feel free to leave it in the comments and, you know, I'll dig in a bit further. If you are still unsure about what exactly what took place with the EOS positions, then if you head back to last week's weekly report and go down into the comments, there's uh, a big update post that I wrote in there about it. So uh, thanks for watching, everyone, and I'll see you all next time.